My name is Bartman. Oh yes, I said my name is Bartman. I didn't say my name was Brothel Ned, nor is it Bartman. Good eye, mate. Bottle Ned here in a really stupid looking hat. Um, we're gonna look for some 19th century outhouses underneath this parking lot, uh, and we're in the ghetto. What's amazing is to think that 19th century treasure exists underneath places this disgusting. Alright. Human poop. Where? Just in that bunch, it's like a pile of toilet paper. Sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody had a good time. Where? Just just right there, I, I piled it underneath. Well, we got another honker on site who recognizes the value of the stupid fucking hat. So stupid looking, but let me explain why it's really important. Um, you know, if you don't wear this stupid looking hat, in a couple years of doing this in the hot sun, your head baking, your skin frying, you're going to look like a piece of uh, chicken that's been left in the refrigerator for too long. You know how it gets that, that kind of weird wrinkly, you know, look to it. So it's yeah. better to wear the stupid hat and Definitely. look like an idiot and look like a leather bag later in life. <laughs> uh. Something pretty interesting to think about is 150 years ago, this wasn't some giant garbage strewn mess. It was actually backyards of Victorian houses with proper folks living here. And there was gardens and people were playing their pianos and all this crazy, you know, civilized stuff and now these are just abandoned buildings, parking lots, homeless people living in here, shooting up drugs, rats. There's a rat right now. Or is that a bird? No, I guess it's not late enough. And anyway, uh, <laughs> they come out at night. Um, so yeah, it's just the transformation in the last 150 years is actually something that's really fascinating to me. Ew. I have to move all this crap out of the way so we can access on the other side of this wall where there might be more pits. Okay. Found my first treasure of the day. My baby daddy. Baby's daddy! Another thing is in areas like this, you want to avoid making dust because there's been a lot of poop and piss that's been accumulating on the ground there and once it becomes air, airborne because of the dust that you're making um, and you breathe it in, uh, that could be bad. I don't really know how, but probably, I'm thinking, Something along the lines of hepatitis. Fecal matters. It's a matter of fecal matter. Don't step in it. It's cleaning time. Put away that doozer that's lying on the concrete floor. Cleaning time. There's some toilet paper, and I don't want to see more. There you go. Oh. That's a whole lot of number one and number two. Yeah.
watch out for hypodermic needles with this kind of crap. Because, you know, if you step on one, you'll have to go to the hospital and get one of those HIV boosters. So, oh boy. How black? Like really dark? Yeah, but now I lost. It's a good spot. This would be right in front of the shed. First 10 feet of the shed. Yeah. We've located a 19th century privy pit underneath the asphalt. And so we've used the spray paint to delineate the dimensions of the original hole that we've been able to probe underneath all this modern crap that's in our way so here it is it doesn't look like much right now but there might be some pretty cool stuff down there shell here looks to be from probably a Winchester repeater rifle from the 1800s. If you put it to your ear and listen closely, you can still hear the sounds of the buffaloes getting shot. Here's something kind of disturbing. So this is called canary glass and you notice the bizarre color. They get that by infusing uranium into the glass, so this is actually radioactive. We've got a case of tetanus waiting to happen here. Yeah. Looks like part of an old baby carriage or yeah, I bet you. bicycle, maybe a unicycle. Into the pit. Here we have a... Um, a piece of lime. So they threw this into their outhouse pit where they took a dump and the lime would um, suppress the odor and disinfect it, you know, like keep the smells and the bacteria down in the hole. So they'd, they'd add lime every couple years to kind of sanitize the pit. So what's left of it is solidified into this piece of geology here. Ah, yes, tetanus, my old friend. Huh. Do you have the time? Wow, there's a pocket watch. That's pretty cool. It's still got the clock face on it. Someone dropped their pocket watch. It's still got the face on it and everything. What time was it? In 1890 when this was thrown away. Half past three. Weird. Oh, oh some decorative glass. Oh, look at that. There's a, there's a leg. This pit's a real ass kicker. Whoosh. Doll leg. All right, I got a bottle. It looks old, it's got a blob top. It's an aqua bottle, so you know it's handmade. All right, I'm gonna dig it out with this thing called the Pico. And it's, you can dig out glass without harming it as opposed to the shovel, you know, it's less precise. Okay. Oh shit, oh, there's a little inkwell right next to it. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, 
that's cool. This is like a, they, I think they call this a bowling pin shape. I guess that makes sense, because it's like a bowling pin. But uh, yeah, it's got a blob top. This is probably made in Europe. Really pretty bottle. This is a really cool thing about finding an outhouse. We looked in the census data and we found the names of the people that lived in this house of the privy that we're digging right now. And here's a picture of them. And here is a bottle that they touched. So you're gonna read a little excerpt from the history of this guy's life, whose privy we're digging right now. It says, Andrew's life included connections to the Sons of Temperance. And here is his whiskey bottle. GH Cutter Old Bourbon Hodling. That's a straight up whiskey bottle from Kentucky, uh, bottled in San Francisco. We found your secret, buddy. We would again like to thank those who used and gave us the bottles. Here they are, and here is the husband's probably ginger ale bottle and his beer bottle, which is interesting because this dude was listed um, in the uh, historical records as being a member of the Knight of the Templars. So he was a temperance dude and who, they didn't condone drinking. Yet here's a beer bottle in his outhouse. We got you, man. Hunk machine. Hunk machine. So this guy was also listed as the DA of the county, and we found a single shot Derringer pistol. Wow, look at that. So there's the uh, trigger guard right there in the barrel. And um, he probably carried it for personal protection because he was a DA. And here's a bullet mold, so he was making his own bullets. And here's some gun oil. Crazy. Crazy. That roll. Shouldn't fall, but it's got a roll lip. Oh, baby. God damn, that's old. We found the oldest bit, that's for sure. I think so. I think so, that's right. Any botology down there? No, I think it's over for the most part. Might be one more sleep or something. But... Here's something else crazy. Um, here's the same family. They're cooking eggs one morning in the 1870s, and this is the remnants of their eggshells that they made for breakfast <sighs> while they made the flapjacks. <laughs> um, yeah, a little like chicken bones or something. This is a meal that they had at their table in their house, which no longer exists. It's just a parking lot. And this is the contents of their privy. It's really kind of trippy, actually. These people have been dead for a century, a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is really cool. I'm having, I actually have to hide, because no one can see this. I found a gold ring. It's from a little kid, and it has an inscription on the inside of it. It says, from mother. So it's really cool. It's probably from the 1880s. It's gold with turquoise. <laughs> well, here we have some of the loot. Which, ah, lots of bottles, doll parts, marbles, more bottles. Oh boy. So uh, I guess I can explain some of the highlights here. Um, so these are bisque dolls. They're made of porcelain from Germany in the 1890s. This is a soda water bottle. There's a whiskey and inkwell bottle. Here's a pumpkin seed flask with a name on it of the dude that uh, was the, the liquor importer. Here's a shoe polish bottle. They called it shoe dressing, 1890s. Here's a uh, frozen Charlotte doll. This is 1870s. It's older than the bisque styles of, uh, of dolls. There's the Liam Perrins, and ooh, here's a cathedral pepper sauce bottle. It's from the 1870s, maybe late 1860s. Blown in San Francisco. Whoa! 
Um, these are coffin flasks because they're shaped like a coffin. It was a good day. I'm inside one of the buildings that they're about to demolish on this lot where we're digging all these privies. But guess what? It's the old traffic court. I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna let out some aggression from all the damn tickets I've gotten. Oh boy. Wait till you see what we're gonna do. <laughs> Here's the courtroom right here. You know, a lot of people were pretty pissed off probably in this courtroom, getting fined hundreds of dollars for their traffic infraction. So, uh, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna do something that I'm sure all of them would appreciate. Okay? Okay. Uh, ooga booga! <laughs> Oh, now I'm just gonna get out of here before I get asbestos poisoning. <laughs> you never want to do that in a non-ventilated environment because buildings built before the 1970s can often have asbestos in the uh, the plaster and the drywall, and you really don't want to breathe it. You can get mesothelioma, kill the shit out of you. Ah. <sighs> 